Hello, what's up? Hi, how are you? Everything okay? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's nice to see you again. And so, prepositions, part two. Prepositions of place. Mmm, lovely. Tell us more, James. Okay, I will. And so, you want to know what my tip of the day is, don't you? I'll tell you what it is. It's this. 7.38.55. Yes, it's strange, isn't it? Now, there was a professor, and not everybody agrees with him, but there was a professor 40 or 50 years ago who thought that, <clears throat> when it comes to communication, that 7% of communication is words. 38% of communication is intonation, the way we use our voice when it goes up and down. And 55% of communication is body language. This is fascinating. And so really my tip of the day is don't worry about words so much. Remember to smile, remember to use your hands and all that stuff and then people will understand everything you want to say. Almost. And so introduction to prepositions, here we go. Prepositions of place, prepositions of time, prepositions of all this stuff. Now, <clears throat> learning prepositions takes time. Why does it take time? Well, there are lots of them for a start. Yes, after, against, along, among, around, as, at, before, behind. I'm not going to bore you with the rest, but here we go. They can be illogical. So we say we travel on trains and buses, but we don't actually travel on them. We travel in them, but we say on. So they can be illogical. Now, they can be irregular. So we say in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, but at night. How strange is this? And then we have a choice sometimes between three or four possibilities. And so we walked across the Alps. It's OK. The Alps, by the way, is a mountain, a group of mountains or a mountain range in Europe. We walked over the Alps. We walked through the Alps. These are all good. They, do, they communicate something slightly different, but they're all good. So you see, there are problems with prepositions, but you've just got to try, haven't you? You've got to keep going. Don't worry about making mistakes. Mistakes are good. Prepositions of place, let's go. So here's, a, here's three prepositions of place. Let's see if I can help. I think there's someone at the door. Let's wait at the bus stop. So object, buildings, at. She's at home. She's at work. She's at school. She's at the mosque, the synagogue. She's at the airport, etc. Buildings. Now, places. They're in Italy. I'll meet you in Richmond. I'll meet you in the pub. I've got you your book in my bag. So inside and places, isn't it? Stand in a queue. It's very strange. Not a cloud in the sky. A story in the newspaper and so on. Girl in the photo. I'm not going to say any more. Your keys are on the table. So this is about surface, isn't it? But also Marble Hill House is on the way to Richmond. I'm on the train, you see, no you're not, but Twickenham is on the Thames. Now this is also strange, isn't it? Twickenham is a place and it's not actually in the river, it's next to the Thames, but we say on the Thames. They live on a farm and it's on the left. So take a right and then it's on the left. So practice folks, here you go. I thought my keys were in my pockets, but I might have left them. Surface on the table. Julia is meeting her sister. Hmm. At Heathrow. Buildings, right? It is a building. It is not a place. It is an airport. A building. Did you see the story about Donald Trump in the papers this morning? Stonehenge is on the way to Bath. I can't meet you for lunch today. Oh dear. I'm meetings until late afternoon. I'm in meetings until late afternoon. Brighton is a nice place and it's on the coast, about 90 minutes south of London. I'll be at home until 11, and then I have to pop over to my mum's. Pop over, short visit. Pop, short visit. Very good natural English, very common. Maybe we should come back later. Look at all the people in the queue. And if that wasn't enough, there's more. Oh my gosh, there's more. Above, below, all that stuff. Over, under, underneath, between, among. I'm going to help you. Her flat is above mine. I am above her on the waiting list. So this is top, isn't it? Above. Sometimes the temperature falls below zero. His work is below average. Of course, yours is above average. Well done. We flew over the Atlantic. She wore a scarf over her head. 
Now, think about 2D and 3D. This is the big difference. Above and below, two-dimensional. Three-dimensional, over and under. Hmm. She's hiding under the bed. Three-dimensional, you see. Three-dimensional. I think you're underage. Can I see some ID? Also, I'm under a lot of pressure to pass all my exams. So you can be under pressure. She's hiding underneath the duvet. I think under is very much like underneath, but maybe covered. She's the person standing between Ali and Helen. So this is two, possibly three, like a sandwich. We talked between ourselves, two or three people. You'll find your blue socks among your other socks. So lots. So two or three between, lots among. They talked among themselves. So this means there was a big group of people or more than three. So it's practice time, folks. It was really cold last night. The temperature fell below zero. I'm not sure where to go. It's a choice to, it's a choice between the Fox and the William. They're both pubs in Twickenham. Sometimes you have to show your ID in the pub to show that you are over 18. She's a really hardworking student and her work is consistently, always, consistently above average. If you look really carefully, you can see a scar. Oh my gosh, yes. Above, my left eye is fine. Below means under, or over or under. Yes, well, they're all possible. You see, 2D or 3D, I think all possible. I think so. And it could be over or above, or under, or below. If you're looking for the remote control for the television, I think you will find it under or underneath the sofa. Both good. Somewhere, all my notes, there's a sheet of paper. Blah, blah, blah. So what are you going to go for, folks? I'm going to go for among. Somewhere among all my notes, there's a sheet of paper with her email address. Somewhere under is kind of possible, but there's not, you, it's either under or it isn't, so not somewhere. Do you see what I mean? Somewhere among, I prefer. There's something going on. Alex and Maria are two people between. And I think there's something going on means something like, hmm, they might be friends or even good friends. Or maybe they don't like each other. Maybe. We don't know. There's something going on. Something. Prepositions of place. Even more. Look, they go on and on without end, almost. Now, let's have a look at by, next to and beside. These are similar. By, next to and beside. By, adjacent, directly adjacent, next to. But, you know, big difference, not a big difference. I think beside is a little bit poetic. So my daughter came and sat beside me, you see. It's a little bit poetic. It's very nice. OK, so there you go, folks. They're standing over there by the traffic lights. Come and sit by me. Subway's next to Burger King. Subway's by Burger King is OK, but I prefer next to. Now, the next group, near or close to. Now, notice here we have close and nearby. I will explain. Twickenham is near Richmond. Poundland is near Greggs. Twickenham is close to, and it's the same meaning, folks, near and close to. You just have to remember close to and near, not near to and not close, near and close to. And then we have Richmond is close, Poundland is nearby. So if you don't use the object, then we say close or nearby. You see what I mean? So Richmond is close. Close to what? We don't know. Well, we do in the context of a conversation, of course. And so I think your keys are behind those books she hid behind the door. There were three people in front of me in the queue. The bank is almost opposite Poundland. And so behind at the back, in front, before, and opposite, directly in front. There you go, folks. So it's practice time. We decided to sit. Hmm. What do you like? I like by the river or next to the river. They're both OK and have our sandwiches. There are quite a few places to eat. Really? Close by, or close, or nearby. You decide. They're all good. When I was queuing for the tickets, the man standing kept pushing. Man standing behind me kept pushing. St Paul's Cathedral is really not opposite. It is opposite, but you can't say really opposite. You say directly opposite, or just opposite. And so it's really close, or near. Close to, I should say. Oh, James, mistake time. Hmm, they're good though. You see those students standing? 
Oh my gosh, yes, they're all possible. You see a student standing by the door, next to the door, near the door, close to the door, in front of the door. And if it's a glass door, even behind the door. Oh dear. Right, I think they're from Argentina. Hmm. When my daughter was a baby, she wanted to sleep. Ah, a bit poetic. Beside me every night I like, or next to is okay. It's break time, a few students smoke in front of the school. Terrible habits. Or just chat. The bank is almost, hmm, almost, almost opposite the school. It's almost opposite the school. You can't say almost by or almost near. Nah, it doesn't work. Almost opposite the school. And so you are. You are, you are. There you are. Yes, I hope it's all become clear now. And so remember, repeat, repeat, practice, practice. And so it is time to say bye bye. So remember to subscribe if you like this stuff, if it has helped you and you would like some more help. More help is on the way with loads more videos to come. So have a great day and bye bye.